but like you. Okay. Remembered. Bye. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. I don't know.
here it's my turn today. I thought I'd jump in and, and give you a little bit of, of well, I'm going to try and make put a smile on your face for a while. Got a little bit of a story to tell you, a little bit of humour, if you want to call it that. Well, it ain't that funny, but it, it, it might might it might give you a little bit of understanding. It's got it's one of them things which appears a little bit humorous and really got a bit of a deeper meaning. I'll get him to talk about the meaning of it in a minute, but I, I wanted to tell the story. So I got permission, I sent me forms off and they approved it, stamped it three times and said I can come in and say hello anyway. Morning, everybody. Look, look, I want you to picture something for me. And if you picture it, then you'll kind of you'll see it a bit differently than just hearing me words. And 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 this will make it come to life a bit. Right. Imagine a shepherd and he's got a load of sheep. All right. And he's sitting there watching his sheep doing all the sheepy things. And and along comes a man, and a man says, Nice sheep you got there. He said, yeah, I think so. He said, did they eat much? And the shepherd said, which ones? The white ones or the black ones? He said, the white ones. He said, oh, well, they eat, they eat about six pounds of grass a day. He said, well, what about the black ones then? He said, well, they eat about six pounds too. Oh, did you get much wool off them? He said, which ones? The white ones or the black ones? He said, the white ones. He said, oh, maybe about hmm, six or seven kilos every once in a while. He said, well, what about the black ones then? He said, them too. Oh. He said, what do you do with them when, when, when they've all grown up? He said, oh, oh, oh. some of them, he said, I'll get rid of them and they'll go to somewhere else. He said, how much do you get for him? He said, well, I'll get about, I'll get about a tenner. He said, for which ones? He said, well, for the white ones. He said, well, about black ones? He said, well, them too. Oh. He said, I can't help but notice. He said, every time I talk about your sheep and ask you a question, you say, which ones, the white ones or the black ones? And the answer's always the same. He said, well, the white ones are mine. Oh, oh, okay. What about black ones then? Well, they're mine too. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. Mankind looks for any type of difference and talks about the differences rather than the similarity between each person. Of course, when you look with your eyes, you may be able to see a physical difference with a person. When you look for you, with your heart, you see the similarity. Humankind likes to divide things up into smaller and smaller amounts or smaller definitions. And now the labels which were on the large are cut down into smaller and smaller segmentation. And this, in essence, of course, is more difference between people. And say, your difference because your hair is a slightly different colour to the person next to you. Or your height is just one centimetre different to them. And there will be more and more divisions in man. And yet it is the underlying sameness that has brought you here today. What is the same for you on the person on the left is the same for the person on the right of you. 
there is a similarity, not a difference between each person, regardless, regardless of culture or sex, sexuality or color of skin or anything else. There is a sameness, not a difference. And yet man says white sheep or black sheep, male or female. You see, through a chance of luck, you were born on one side of a railway track compared to another side of the track. You may have been born affluent or non-affluent, or rich or poor. But it is what's underlying that. And that is the point of the groups that we follow. The groups, in essence, we are preparing yourself. But maybe I'll talk more about that in the group. So I understand we have a healing list and let us begin with that now before we continue with our topic. May I have the names, please? We can start with Clay Perone, or maybe that's pronounced Peroni, Michelle, Stephanie, Rick, Lorna, Jasmine and Jane, Stephen Denise Wareham, Rose Frazier, Bob and Doris, Lena Maltabano, Taylor, Anna, Jason Belinda, Teresa, Chris and Howard, Rhonda, Liz, Mike Eskins, Move Norton, Dimitri, Miria Stefanos, Andrews, George, Stella, Irene, and Angela. Thanks. Thank you. If you have names which you would like to include in the list, please email and they will be added for subsequent weeks. So we continue our discussion regarding energy. And to begin with, I would like to talk about false energy or to be more accurate, false belief. Whenever there are challenging times or a perceived threat, man chases spirituality and spirituality starts to grow. When times are unsettled, they seek some stability an essence or a core. And as the world divides and divides further, then there will be a rise of those which do not wish the diversity, but want the similarity. So as the divisions take place, spirituality starts to rise. And they becomes more interest in, what well, as I say, life beyond the physical form. And people then start to believe in spirit. Or at least a deity or a religion. 
And often this is a false belief. They initially chase something external to them when there is agitation. And agitation, they look for that stability. And they look for the answer external to themselves. So again, if it was a religion, they would seek church. Those chasing spiritual contact would chase spirit or guide or healing guide. And in times of complete stress, often the human psyche will see things which, well, frankly, is not there. When there is stress, if somebody said there is an angel on your shoulder, then they will begin to see it. Now, of course, that may have some psychological benefit, but that is not the purpose of the discussion. And also, the third reason is man being part of a crowd seeks the unifying factor. And as friends and family start to believe in spirit, then they will start to believe as well to conform, to be part of an order, to match the neighbour, if you wish. So these three, and there are others, in each case, man, because of drama in their life, or wanting to be with other people, will say spirit is with them and there is an angel there and a guide in the opposite corner. And then they chase these answers and mediums will become a medium and seek mediumship. Seek mediumship as an external vocation to themselves. They seek healing because of their own requirement for healing. Hence you hear the phrase, the healers are the most broken people. They miss the sign. They are needing to give healing because they need to receive healing. They are not seeing the sign of pointing them inwards. So those developing the evidential mediumship will chase anything too quickly and miss the point of fundamental understanding. Those seeking this form of mediumship will be in a rush to get the link and a rush to speak and miss the point of spirit being with them. Those working on a psychic level will seek their message through tools and props which they bring into the room and miss the connection to the other. But in, a, in such panic and desire, then mediumship becomes rather fickle. And it is up and it's down and it is left and it is right. And it is not in its truth, but rather is lived in the falsehood of belief and the desire for satisfaction of various names and guises. But they miss the connection to spirit. So you see, man chases answers external to them and then seems, seeks to produce a product which has limited foundation and therefore 
can only ever be unstable. In your lives, you will either see these type of people or you will become one of these people. Your desire to achieve overshadows the desire to connect to spirit. And then, of course, your own or their own dissatisfaction will mean that they will promote the dissatisfaction in others and start to see the errors of the ways of other people. So the ego internally is then seen externally. Your battles inside are then projected onto other people. And all of this because the feeling of fear or separation on the inside. And then man wishes to define the spirit connection in smaller and smaller detail, saying that it is this and not that, and it is this way and not that way. And it must be given in various ways, in various styles, in various techniques, which must conform to a set of beliefs and order. Now, this may help someone to develop it if it is true. But if the connection is untrue, the order that is chased means the production becomes more difficult and harder and more people step away from the spiritual. So at times, the congregation in a spiritual church is more spiritual than the medium doing the demonstration. As a congregation wants reminding of their connection and the demonstrator will be one which says, I have the connection and may not, or may. So what has all this got to do with energy? And the answer is in the fundamental. Remove your rush to develop and to change and spend your time on the basics. Yes, that old phrase. Often the quicker you change and develop, the worse you are. Not always. The energy around you as you begin your process of change and development of spiritual understanding is paramount in your understanding. The act of sitting still or being still, the act of changing your awareness firstly to the inside world. And it must be the inside world, at least to begin with. Because man seeking answers externally to themselves will never find it. It must be through the inside world. So in a talk, or talks I will give later in the week, I will use this phrase. Listen with your own ears. See with your own eye. Feel with your own heart.
So this is not seeking the answer externally, but seeking the answer within yourself, by yourself. Seeking the energy that plays with you. Look for the answer within your body and or within your aura, if you wish to expand just slightly. See how the energy plays through different parts of your body and you'll see where it is stuck. So when you have a problem, a difficulty, a challenge, Look internally first and see where your energy is blocked within you. Is it flowing truly or not? Are you feeling insecure? Well, address the base chakra. Look for the problems and the blockages. Where is it not flowing? And you think you may not be able to know this answer, but you do know the answer. A little bit of patience and practice is all that is required. Go to the point of where you believe your block to be, for your energy to flow correctly, and search that area. Are you feeling unconnected? Do you feel alone? Do you feel insecure, afraid, weak of mind or motive? Are your emotions challenged? Are you seeking another? Of course, these are just a few questions and will relate to the chakra of your choice. So the awareness to begin with, will alter or give you the chance to alter the flow of energy around and through you. And by placing your attention on that appropriate chakra, then you may be able to change and manipulate. Because what you put your attention on minimizes and then it grows. So you put your attention on what is wrong and this will minimize the area or the fault or the block and will change it then into a free flow and the growth of the energy through that chakra at that point will change again. And then you will feel the shift beginning to happen. And then you must let, let your mind be free and, and encourage it not to recreate this block. And the mind will then create other issues if it's so inclined to do. But if you're aware that the mind creates issues, then you can resolve that as well. Much of your healing ability, I'm talking healing ability within yourself to yourself, is adjusting the way you think. And in adjusting this way, then there can be a far greater flow of energy and purity of self. Now, if you notice with these examples given, and of course, there is many, many varieties of problem and answer. None of them have gone, go seek a healer, go seek a medical practitioner until you come up with that illness that does require. Spend your time in the flow of energy. And you'll find that then the energy becomes greater, more stable, more connected, and more truth will become available to you. If you have a problem with your mediumship, 
where is your where is your belief where is your problem seek first there and you'll get used to the process of healing yourself Now, the flow of energy in and through and around the body can pick up, either increase or decrease in your perception. As you become trapped in a thought, then all the concentration goes into that thought. There is no awareness to change or possibility to change being given to that thought. And you become trapped in a pathway or an attitude. So the act of meditation, the act of stillness, of calm, the act of connected to nature, the feeling of connect connection to other people, the satisfaction with self, and the love of life. Mixed in with some exercise and self-care will give you a bill of health. and would increase your life expectancy. If we were looking at life purely as a human world, belief. So as you meditate, the energy picks up and the energy becomes quite large at times. It is not that you are gaining energy. It is not that you are plugging in, but rather is because you are removing the blockages to what is there. So then the energy increases and the intensity increases and then develop your mediumship. This is why the discovery of self is important to the production of anything within your world. So the more you are still, the more that you connect to beings talking about topics like this. The more that you look in for your problem solution. The greater the energy that you will have opened towards. This is a stepping back from the limitation of the physical world into the opening of... Hmm, Nearer to truth, shall we say. So if you see yourself dividing sheep into either black or white, this is a limiting factor. And this will then start to limit your abilities to connect to mediumship or to your true self, if you prefer. Now, so as you begin to open to this possibility and you connect more to the non-physical world, your openings within yourself start to widen. The energy flow starts to become more intense and larger. The ability of connecting to spirit 
or revealing the spirit that is already there. That is a better phrase. Well, that becomes more probable as well. So those who have chased spirit externally will begin to drop away at these times. They bring falsehood into the physical world. Those which have begun this journey and then open to the spirit that is already there, then start to portray more truth and more reason and more logic and more, well, let's call it more sense. They haven't fallen into the trap of seeking the answers externally, trying to conform, trying to relieve stress and anxiety. They have sought their truth. So with the first examples, those who have chased spirit externally, you will find spiritual egos everywhere. Those who go internally and find their connection that way, they know their truth and they do not always speak or promote it. Because they see that as falling away and living into the world of ego, not in the truth of connection. So as the blockages start to decrease, the energy starts to rise. The energy in the aura means the aura starts to expand. The colors become lighter and brighter. The density of mud in the aura gets broken up and that mud starts to diminish. So those that meditate will find more health in their life. The expansion of this energy means that others are drawn to them. And the connection of other people becomes very natural. People know that they are something different rather than more of the spiritual ego. And at this time, then, if the mind becomes sufficiently still, then spirit have more and more control. And they can step into that mind and deliver what needs to be delivered. Words, healing, phenomena, or anything else. So you see the mind will start to step beyond the veil. The spirit intensity will come into the mind. Yet the medium becomes null and void and is not required for what needs to take place. So the awareness of the medium seems to decline. The memory is gone. And this is all because you chase your answers internally first. So now, as the blockages become even more minimalized, the energy flow becomes greater and is expanded. And then the start of the rise of energy from the base of the spine upward starts to occur. It finds less and less resistance. And the rising of that energy is not within the control of the medium or the person. It will happen 
quite involuntary. So then the, the energy will rise, let us say, first will be felt at the solar plexus. And the strength of self becomes very evident. Not from an egotistical point of view, but that person feels very stable. The energy flowing outwards boosts the connection to spirit at this point. We practice then the energy will rise to the heart. And the heart becomes open. The desire to help mankind becomes prevalent. And the understanding that there is love in this world that must be shared. The heart beats stronger, the pressure on the chest and the moments of pure love without understanding start to occur. So a being can fall into I love everyone. And often those which fall into the edge of death and touch that veil return to human life knowing that the love is the most important thing. They're connected to others, the desire to serve, the desire to help and the demands of self seem to drift. You assist more people. The love is quite intoxicating. <laughs> Yet, the chance for the ego to step back in is always there. Nonetheless, the work is continued and man moves past this bliss of love. And the energy will fall all the way back down. But the work must continue. A man starts to shed, to remove people that do not serve, a product that they do not wish to have in their life anymore, the letting go. But the letting go only of the physical, not the non-physical. The, the non-physical world becomes much more appealing. So the heart where the desire was to heal or help other changes into the desire of spirit becomes stronger. And the energy then becomes more intense around the head, the shoulders, the back. And the messages from spirit begin. They may have begun at heart, but they begin when the throat is activated. Not always verbal messages either. If this is held onto, then man will stay at this point. They must begin the process of going beyond or clarifying their issues and problems. And freeing themselves of the debris of a human life.
You see, if your mediumship is in doubt, in your belief, then there is the letting go of the debris of human life will assist you. Of course, that is quite a generic phrase, but you will have to dig in to find out what you are holding on to, which is limiting your steps forward. And if you are shedding the human life, people and products, shall we say, beliefs, thoughts, memories, attachments, desires, then the energy rises into the mind and becomes very disorienting. You shared what you thought was true. And you are cleansed within the mind before stepping into the connection of spirit. Does this not sound like a transition from physical to spiritual, or if you prefer the words death and the word death and then the healing that must take place before you step into the spirit. Does this not also correlate to the world of astral, the cleansing? Does it not correlate also to the cleansing of karma? Is it not? the shedding of baggage. When you die, all that's left behind is the belief of the false self. And the real self opens and is found once more. But it was there all the time. Is that not the same as what I have said? Find it internally first. Then your foundations of truth will matter more than the production and belief in the external world. The energy will do its work if you let it. If you open to it, if you stop restricting it. And a production of anything that you wish to produce. From a simple message to the moving of a mountain. All becomes possible. But it is actually less likely that you will start to give it at this point. Because you see the truth of the world through the eyes of truth. Not through the eyes of the falsehood. But from the eyes of pure understanding. So if you are concerned or have attachment to hmm, either a message or the strange occurrences that may occur, from those intense feelings in the crown or your forehead, to the pressure on your chest, the desire to give to a world that is already perfect. And there is another step.
The step, of course, is what is holding you back. But you say, I cannot be enlightened. It will take me one million years. Thousands of lifetimes. The truth, of course, is you can be enlightened in the blink of an eye. When you are, you will see it is just a blink of an eye. That you heard the words. You did not take the activity that was suggested. And you believe was focused on one side of the veil and not the other. You have believed in your inadequacy. You have believed in your minimalization. You have believed in the body. What holds you between one side and the other is no more than a grain of sand. How hard would it be to step beyond it? What would your mediumship be like then? What would your words be like? What would you see and what would you hear? If you wish to listen, use your own ears. Be still and know the truth. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. The answer is within you. How many ways must it be said? Let spirit do the work. Now, the point of this talk today, although it has correlations to you, and I'm sure you will take the parts which resonate the most, but let me, let me sum it up this way. When a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Until next week. Come home to us. God bless you all.
Hi. Yep. I don't lean back, so if I lean forward, I see all the wrinkles. I'm just <laughs> look at <how> young girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. It's wonderful. Um, Thank you. So what do we do? Yeah. Oh, I can't get so itchy now. <clears throat>